Today, we're going to talk about sound, and especially how animals use sound. Before we get to that, we must understand what sound is. Sound is a vibration that moves through a gas, liquid, or a solid. These vibrations move in a pattern of waves. Sound waves move through the air and eventually make it to your eardrum, where your brain turns it into something you recognize. If you were to draw sound, it would look like this. A wavelength is a distance between two sequential peaks. These are measured in terms of amplitude and frequency. Amplitude is the height of a wavelength, and this determines the volume of the sound. The taller the wavelength, the louder the sound. The shorter the wavelength, the quieter the sound. Listen to these two sounds. Which one has a higher amplitude? Frequency measures the number of wavelengths in one second, and it determines the pitch of a sound. The more wavelengths mean the higher pitch. The less wavelengths mean the lower pitch. Listen to these two animals. Which one has the higher frequency? Animals have evolved to use sound in a variety of ways, whether to warn predators, find a mate, defend territory, or communicate with groups, there are many crucial things animals use sound for in order to survive. Animals also use different frequencies to communicate. Have you ever observed a dog seemingly listening and reacting to something you can't hear? There's a reason why dogs and cats know when someone is at the door before you do. Many animals can hear sound frequencies that we cannot. Frequency is measured in a unit called Hertz. Humans can hear between 20 Hertz and 20,000 Hertz. Frequencies above 20,000 Hertz are known as ultrasound and frequencies below 20 hertz is known as infrasound. Animals have evolved over time to hear and make certain frequencies so that they can survive better in their environment. Take an elephant living on a vast plain. Elephants travel long distances and must be able to communicate to their herd over a large habitat. What frequency do you think elephants communicate in. Elephants make low frequency sounds. Low frequency sounds travel the slowest, but also the furthest. These sounds are also able to pass through things like trees and bushes on the plain without being reflected as easily. What about an animal that uses high frequency sounds? Bats and other animals that use echolocation use high frequency sounds. These sounds travel faster and shorter, which makes them better at being reflected. Just like the light bounces off a mirror, sound bounces off hard objects and back to the bat so it can locate prey. Try out making echoes in spots that have a lot of hard surfaces. Experiment with high and low frequency sounds. Bats use high frequency sounds to locate prey. But what's even more amazing is that some of their prey have evolved strategies using these sounds to avoid being eaten. Over time, certain moth species have developed to not only hear bats' high-frequency calls, but use their own calls to disguise their location or send signals that mean they taste bad. The evolutionary race continues. This only begins to describe the amazing science behind sound and the ways animals use it. Now, let's go outside and see what we can hear. We are underneath a bridge. What do you hear? 
How do you think the sound of a noisy bridge might affect the animals that live in this area? You may have guessed that animals living under this bridge would have a hard time using sound to do regular things like avoid predators, look for food, and find mates. Scientists that study noise levels in natural areas have found that, in general, animals are stressed by loud noises, and this can lead to population decreases. However, they have also found that a few animals have adapted to such noise. Some urban birds have raised the frequency of their calls so that they don't get confused with other noises. Robins have adjusted their schedules to sing in the quieter moments of the city. Almost all living things can hear, but they may not have ears like you and I. Take a close look at Ranger Russell. Do you see his ears? If you look close enough, you will see a layer of skin that looks softer than the skin surrounding it. This layer of skin is covering his inner ear structure, kind of like our eardrums. He picks up on sound through vibrations on the ground or in the water. A box turtle's hearing is very limited, only 50 to 1500 hertz. Now listen to this woodpecker. Woodpeckers may peck into trees in search of food or to build a nest, but they also do what is called drumming, which is a series of fast and loud knocks. They start doing this in the spring to let others know that this is his territory. Intruders beware. Here's another woodpecker. Let's listen in now. Like woodpeckers, other birds can be very noisy, especially in the spring. The calls are used for a number of different things, like defending territory, finding mates, or communication between groups. What's really cool is that each species has a different song and utilizes different frequencies to do so. These songs are usually learned from listening to older adults, much like how we learn language. Does the buzzing of bees ever scare you? Well, they don't mean to be scary. The buzz you hear when a bee is approaching is actually the sound of its four wings moving really, really fast. 11,400 strokes per minute to be exact. Bees can fly an average of 15 miles per hour. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned some new things about the science of sound. Remember that listening to the sounds of nature is a great way to experience the outdoors while staying healthy and safe. See you next time!